Hello and welcome to another video by me, Charles to 10 Now today we're going to be finally reviewing Horizon Zero Dawn. Now I'm sorry this has been a while in the works, well, from uh, sort of going through the game and stuff. I actually completed the game and got the Platinum within three or four days um, because I absolutely got hooked on the game. Um, but I just haven't got round to doing this review. I just haven't felt like doing it. I ended up doing the Disc Jam review because I, I thought that was a newer game, so it'd be better to do. And I just never got around to doing it. Um, and so here I am doing it now. I thought it'd be quite good to talk about it as well because there's been some stuff announced about the game and things and its future. Um, but stick around till the end of the video um, because I have got a uh, sort of a sneak peek for something I'm going to start doing next month on this channel. But yeah, so let's get into the review. So Horizon Zero Dawn, I'm pretty sure everyone here will know, is an exclusive on the, the PS4 and it's set in a post, post-apocalyptic post world, I believe they call it. Um, and it's set a thousand years after an event occurred. Um, where you don't exactly know what happens, but now the world is sort of ruled by metal beasts, and they're all kind of designed to look like animals. You don't know why or anything. And, and the kind of plot revolves around that and why there are these ones that are corrupted and what's happening, and sort of finding out what how it all happened, and it's to do with this earpiece you have, which I have in the gameplay here where you can scan things. Um, and so that's the basic plot. Uh, it's, it is a very basic plot. I really enjoyed it. I know some people think it's really boring. Um, I know some people think it's very, um, what's the word, e sort of predictable with what's going to happen. I thought it, I had some ideas of what it might do and it didn't do what I thought it would. It did some other stuff. So I really enjoyed the, the game and the plot was something that made me want to keep playing. I actually spent, well this is gameplay from I think the first day, so Wednesday when it came out, the first and uh during this day i played like the opening part and then i literally just did tons of side missions and things um i think this is a side mission that i'm doing at the moment now this is because i really wanted to save the main missions for later because i thought they might be a lot more different i mean they're they're all very similar the missions and later on the side missions are very dull um i have not done many side missions when i got later into the game um and it was weird because I remember watching the reviews and people saying the best way to level up is to play the last mission. And I actually got to level 50 before I... No, I got to level 50 during the last mission. I didn't have to do any other quests um, because I literally did all the, the side activities before the last mission um, and that leveled me up. So, yeah. And I'd done basically everything else, so I just had to do a couple of side things afterwards, like the final cauldron and stuff. But, yeah, I'd already finished leveling up. But, anyway, so the story, I really enjoyed playing through. It kept me hooked throughout the game. You go, you slowly uh, venture through the world. You start off at the bottom right, and you slowly go up and to the left, where you've got the big open area, um, which is more of the desert area. And you slowly progress through all these different areas. So you've got the first area you start in, which is sort of snowy, sort of like this area here. This is sort of the second area you enter. It's very snowy peaks, mountains, and it's where you were found. It's where you've been kept all your life because you're an outcast. And then you, for whatever reason, you have to leave. I won't say what, just in case, spoilers, people still want to play the game who haven't already. And you end up going to this other area as you try to get to, I think it's Sunfall, you're trying to get to towards the end of the game, which is on the complete other side of the map. Now, one thing, I was disappointed with the story, and this won't be spoilers, because, yeah, it doesn't happen. You don't know where this is set. Um, I was really hoping that I would find out where it was set. I know it's in America somewhere, I think they've said that, and obvious because you've all got american accents which uh i'll get to in a bit but yeah um i i really wanted to know where this was set and you never know they might do it in a future game um because i i definitely think there'll be a sequel it sold extremely well they set it up well for a sequel um and i think it deserves one really it's it's a really good game but yeah, I I really there was a couple of points I really wanted to learn, but I feel like they're saving that for other games, which is fair enough. If they want to turn this into a franchise, then by all means they can do that. So, but overall, I think I give the story an uh, an eight or a nine. I'm uh, let me just think about this because 
it is a basic story, but I personally really enjoyed it. I know some people didn't, so... But I'm going to give it a 9. I thought the story was great. So for the story, I'd definitely give it a 9. So now for the gameplay. This is the main aspect of the game. And... Yeah, well, the gameplay, obviously. It's a lot of fun. The combat is extremely fun. Uh, you're going around mainly using your bow w mixed with some melee combat, which I hadn't seen much gameplay of, but I tended to do it quite a bit to get a few attacks and stuff, especially when you start upgrading stuff. But the combat is very good. You've got a mix of stealth. So most encounters start off as go here, stealth as much as you can, or go in full... Bow, I was about to say guns blazing, but bows blazing, I guess, with your blaze, blaze canisters and things, um, which you can craft different arrows and bows and weapons. There are some type gun type weapons, but I actually never use them in the game. I just used bows and the. I didn't really use the trip caster, which is your first sort of tool, but I used the rope caster where you could tie down enemies. I, that one was really fun. I like using that. Um, I later bought a bow which could like freeze people and all sorts of things. But I really, really enjoyed uh, my time with Horizon. The The gameplay is so addictive for me personally. I've never really been a big fan of massive open worlds such as Skyrim or Fallout. Because I, I have my own problems with those and I will eventually review something like that. Probably Skyrim because if I get a Switch, which will hopefully be soon... When Skyrim comes out and that, I'll probably review it then. Because I, I things like Skyrim I could never get into on uh, the big platforms. Because they were just so intense and so much going on and t so much to do. It was overwhelming for me personally. Same thing with Witcher. Um, with this, I felt it very slowly brought me into the world. And I didn't feel overwhelmed as I progressed through the game. It was very much at your own pace. And I feel that's a good thing because I think this is a good game to bring in a lot of casual players to the more open world genre, um, RPG genre. Um, and I had a lot of fun with it. Um, I really hate crafting aspects, but I loved it in this game. I thought it was really well done. I felt they could expand on things such as the outfits and things like that where you could dye them or get different parts like helmets and things because you could only get outfits in general. Which I think that could be something they could improve in the sequel. But overall I think the gameplay was great. And I think if they wanted to expand it more. Just add in new types of weapons and uh, creatures and things. Because obviously this is only in one area. And she doesn't, a Aloy doesn't know about other areas of the world. Where there could be different machines. Uh, you only know about the, the basics. And they're all quite similar. Um, you've got your kind of ones that. Uh, just get scared of you and run away. You've got one these watchers that will, um, what what's the word? They'll sort of watch you, I guess. And then when you attack, they'll start attacking you and things. And then you've got the really violent ones that will just attack you, whatever happens. Um, and they're kind of the, th the three areas of enemies. Um, and then you've got the really really big ones, which are awesome. You've got the stormbird. The Thunderjaw and the Rockbreaker are the three main ones. They are awesome. The Rockbreaker is like a giant slug thing. I don't think I have footage of that because originally I wasn't going to show it off, but I saw reviews and lots of people kind of showed it. Uh, you got the Stormbird, which is a massive sort of bird in the name. And the Thunderjaw is the T-Rex looking thing, which has been shown a lot in gameplay and on the cover and things. But overall, I really enjoyed the gameplay. So again, I'm going to give it a 9. Um, now, for sound and music, I thought it was great. I thought the sound design is brilliant in the game. I won't have that playing because, yeah, yeah but it, don't worry about it. But the sound and music in the game is pretty good. The only problem on that scale is the voice acting. Now, I think Aloy's voice actor is brilliant. She's done things like Life is Strange, which is a game I really enjoyed. And I think she's really good. And there are a couple of other characters that are quite good voice actors in the game. But overall, the side characters are not done particularly well. And um, that's a shame, because you need the side characters to be just as good in a game like this. Because you're going to be encountering a lot of people. Uh, but it, overall, it didn't affect how I played the game. Um, but I think I'd definitely give that sort of like a, a 7, I think. So, yeah. But um, for my overall review of the of the game... I think, now I've thought about this a lot, originally I said a 9 when I first thought about reviewing the game, and there are problems with it, 
there are things that I would have wanted to happen in the game that didn't, and I feel they could have done better. But I th- I think it's one of the best PS4 exclusives. It well, it definitely is. Aside um aside from Uncharted 4, it is the best. So um yeah, I think I'm gonna give it an 8.5 out of 10 because I can't really decide whether to give it a nine or an eight. So I'm gonna put it in there. I think it's a brilliant game. If you have a PS4 and you haven't bought it already, you need to pick this game up because it is a phenomenal game. It's a lot of fun. Good story, good acting, good characters. So overall, uh, yeah, I'll give it an 8.5 out of 10. So that'd be it for my uh, review, but stick around for a little bit because I will have a preview of a series I'm starting next month, which was going to start this month, but I haven't had time to do it, so it will be next month. But yeah, until uh, the next video, I'll see you again next time.